What's up guys? Hello and welcome back and my personal congratulations to making it to episode two. You made it through the first one. That's the toughest one. The wound is open. The band-aid's ripped off. Now let's continue to make it fun. In today's episode, I'm going to be trying to focus around some of the drivability of this car. I, I kind of like have set a bit of a goal to try and drive it uh, to 4th of July. So to do that, there's there's a lot of stuff that we got to get done, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on in today's episode. It's going to be a little jumpy around you, working on some different tasks, but there's a lot of different tasks to tackle, so that's what I'm going to be working on. Stay tuned! I'm sure all of you at home are very proud of me for taking such good care of the car while it's in its, its weakened state and keeping it covered. You might even be a little bit surprised. So we're gonna start on the wheels. Uh, this car, so the, the concept car has a bit of a wide body to it. Um, so I got some two inch wheel spacers here and uh, I have some cool wheels that have been sitting around the shop for a really long time. These bad boys, overspray madness. With a little bit of polish, a little bit of cleaning, these will come back to life. These were the wheels that were on the Ford Mustang. Uh, they are 20s, I believe. Yeah, R20s. They're 20s and they look exactly like the ones from the video. Not gonna lie, just the fact that I had these wheels was one of the driving factors that made me wanna buy and build this build because I was like, oh, I already got the wheels for it. And um, I, I don't know, I was too lazy to sell the wheels on Craigslist, so instead I bought a whole car to put them on. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these, pull it outside and try out our, test out our wheel and wheel spacer combo and see how it fits on the car. A small interruption from uh, the work that we need to be doing today because this ridiculous Chevy dealership won't cut Eric a key even though his company is on the title because we haven't actually transferred the title fully yet uh, they want me to show up here and give him my driver's license even though my name's nowhere on any of the paperwork yet but uh, apparently my name's important so I got to be here and uh, hopefully now we can get a key continue working that'd be great So frustrating. So the guy at the Chevy dealership insisted that I come out there and he see all my information. He spent forever making photocopies of everything before he even checked if they had the key. Then once he checked if they had the key, they didn't have the key. So he sent us down the street and we were 10 minutes late before they closed down the street. But they have everything to do it for us. So um, this is the wrong episode to be complaining about the Chevy key once again. But no Chevy key today. Back to work. Well, with the air suspension at maximum, it looks a little bit silly. Glad we have those two inch wheel spacers because uh, without that, I don't think this wheel would fit on the car, period. It's got too much back spacing. Um, but this is gonna be good actually. So we'll do like, you know, subtle wide body kit kind of just coming out over about here, a little bit over the wheel. And uh, this is gonna look good. It's interesting because this car ha does have air ride. So like when we're going over really bumpy stuff, we're actually gonna have a ton of ground clearance because we can air up and ride over stuff. That'll be pretty cool. Eric needs the jack now because he's working on Corvette stuff. So I'm gonna find something else to do. I'm gonna be working on the main door support bar. So since we lost some support in here, we're gonna add it back in right here. So this is where the door started. So where the door ends. Uh, so I'll take this off right here. I'm gonna build a plate that we're gonna weld in here and a plate that we're gonna weld in here. And then we're gonna have a piece of very, very strong tubing that's gonna run across there. So it's gonna be like a door bar and a support for the car. It's gonna do double duty. Got the first bar cut up, so it's a real snug fit. You can see it's in there holding itself, and that's the two points that we're gonna weld it to. So that's all good. I was gonna weld in some plates, but Eric said it's just not necessary. The metal's totally thick enough. It's not worth wasting the time. So now I'm gonna hop over to the other side and build another bar for the other side.
think the sun may have foiled my plans on that shot. Anyways, we got a front bar for the front left and one for the front right. Next thing I gotta do is come in here with the flap disc and I'm gonna clean this whole area off where we're gonna be welding on, clean that off there and there. I'm gonna chamfer the edges all around here and then uh, Eric is gonna go ahead and weld this up for me because I want it to look pretty. All right, everything's all cleaned up, paint removed. We have nice metal to metal surfaces, so Eric's gonna jump in here and weld these up. All right, we got our door bars welded in nicely. Eric went ahead and welded them up. Now I'm not sure, I know that this area is gonna be black right here. I don't know if I'm gonna clear coat the bar and leave it this uh, exposed steel color to match the rest of the wide body stuff, or if I'm gonna go ahead and do gloss black on the whole thing, but this will be gloss blacked to match the rest of the car. Cosmetically, although this car is a total joke, I kinda want it to look cool, so I'm gonna pay attention to it. Um, <clears throat> here's the other side though, and it looks really nice, and these are super, super, super duper strong. Eric was jumping up and down on them. And they're really tough. So uh, one of the next things I'm gonna do real quick is, uh, since I have the flap disc out here, there's a little bit of a high spot right here that I wanna take down. So I'm gonna pull all this tape back uh, and grind down this high spot. And then uh, I think we're gonna move over to the tail light. All right, that looks a lot better now that we got the tape off of there and stuff, but I did uncover the fact that like, we scratched the paint up a little bit throughout here, which is kind of a bummer when that saw was hitting in the middle. Uh, that saw is pretty wild, so accidents were gonna happen. I knew that, but that's a bit of a bummer. Um, so one thing I wanna ask you guys, does anybody uh, leave a comment if you know the answer to this, know of some sort of rubber trim or rubber like gasket material that I could get that would cover kind of like this whole area? I would I'd really like to, because what I thought we were going to do originally was put a piece of metal across this and then uh, weld it in and then grind it down so it was a nice like angled piece. But uh, it turns out if we do that and we weld too close to the windshield, obviously we're going to break the windshield and I don't want to do that. So I, I'm looking for like some rubber gasketing. Maybe if I could get a piece over this and then a piece over this or maybe one piece over both. If anybody knows where I could find some of that, I probably have to be able to get it locally because we're running out of time to get things shipped. But I may be able to get some things shipped. If anybody's got an idea, of something they've seen anywhere, put uh, leave a comment below and I will see it. All right, so next thing we're gonna work on is uh, I'm gonna test fit the tail light. So this whole back section's obviously been dinged up pretty bad. It's gonna be covered by one of the back wings, but I wanna, I wanna repair it to somewhat of a standard. And to do that first though, I wanna test fit the rear tail light, see how it looks, see how this body line, uh, the, like you know survive through the wreck and if it's still good and then maybe I'll just have to work on this part up here we'll see but let's get the taillight in first well as you might expect the taillight housing is a little bit worse for the wear it looks like it took like the brunt of the impact so I was able to kind of get the taillight to to suck in over here um, and then coming around here, but then the uh, the bolting the bolt up parts that are like right here and down here and here, they're pushed in a little bit too much. It's not very far. It's like a half an inch. You can kind of see over here uh, what's going on. So I'm going to have to get in there with a hammer and kind of hit this stuff back out a little bit, and then I'll be able to do that. And that's the same thing that's going to have to happen over here. But now at least I know how much work I got to do. And then over here, we're going to do some uh, paintless dent removal. Uh, to pop that out as well. That's the game plan. I really want to try one of those Harbor Freight kits. So that stuff's got to be worked on, but I think I want to work on it in the daylight. So I'm going to work on that tomorrow. I'm going to jump into the final part of the rear windshield removal. I'm going to grab a razor blade and run along the sides here and cut through that rubber. And uh, that should free up all this glass that's sitting around there. Hopefully I won't hit my knuckles on any of it.
Well, my hands are bleeding, but I got her done. So all this up here now doesn't have that rubber anymore that holds those chunks of glass on. So I can come in with that flap disc, clean that whole area up, and then it'll get a nice coat of black paint uh, all the way around here. So I mentioned earlier that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get rid of all this white stuff and uh, just expose the black stuff underneath, maybe give it a nice coat of black paint to clean it up a little bit. But I think that'll make it look better. So to kind of be all, all the bars up top are black and then the interior starts the, uh, the red stuff. I know it's not exactly great to talk interior color schemes in the middle of the night, but you get the idea. Well, I've ran into a bit of a problem. I went to go get the spacer and throw this on here and I realized that this guy's right here. This thing right, right here, that guy, that thing is really, really, really close to touching the tire. And if I throw a 20 inch wheel and tire on there, I can pretty much guarantee it's gonna hit, especially because I don't think that mine Mine has probably just as much, as much offset as that, or maybe less. So, I gotta go figure that out. The spaces that we have that are the correct lug pattern for the front are an inch and a half. Now I have some other ones that are two inches that are over here, um, but they are one millimeter off the wrong lug pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and bore them out. They're hub centric, so they have the same hub. So if I bore it out just a little bit, one millimeter of distance from here to here, so I only have to bore it out a half a millimeter in each hole, um, it'll still cinch up and it'll still bolt up and it'll be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and bore it out and then we'll give it a test fit and see if the wheel will fit with that. If not, I'll have to order a larger spacer. Well, I have no idea how, but it fits. So you can see that that's that thing we were worried about right there, and it's got nice clearance from the wheel. Now, the, the wheel and tire, when they move up and down with the, the shock, that piece moves up and down with it. It's essentially a part of the knuckle. Well, it is a part of the knuckle, so it can't get any closer to the tire, so you don't have to worry about it rubbing on the tire. So it's basically a, a matter of if it fits, it fits, and it does fit. So that's our that's our wheels for this ride. Obviously they need to be cleaned up, but they'll look, they will look really cool and match the wheels in the video when they are cleaned up. Um, and, uh, and it's got some nice, uh, some nice poke and some nice falcons on there uh, for, for the wide body. Although I'm still considering getting a little bit larger spacers. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I am considering it. So I'll think on it. I may get three inches instead. All right guys, it is late, so I gotta head out. Um, a little bit shorter of an episode today. I, I, I definitely, I tried my best. I was running a lot of errands for the uh, Corvette stuff in the beginning of the day, and that kind of really took out from my time schedule on the Mercedes. I'm gonna try not to let that happen. I'm gonna make Eric, uh, we're, it basically the Corvette's getting like double the love, but it's, it's coming out really cool, so it's kind of worth it. But uh, I'm gonna have to keep my, keep my head down and stay more focused on this. That whole uh, Corvette key thing today was such a massive waste of time. It was a real bummer. Um, so uh, we do have though, now that we have that bar in there and we got our wheels and our, our wheel spacers and adapters figured out, that is the mechanical stuff of this car essentially sorted out. So the rest, we just are having fun with cosmetics, cleaning it up, making it look the way we want. And uh, there's still a lot more transformation to come. But I will say in one hour from now, the Corvette episode is gonna drop. And if you wanna talk about a, a transformation, Wow, don't miss that one. It is epic. Uh, you guys are gonna love, it's like, it's like that one men's warehouse. You're gonna love the way you look. You're gonna love the way that Corvette looks. We built an off-road vet cart. Um, so tune in for that in one hour. Um, unfortunately, the Mercedes is still in the ugly duckling phase, but it will look badass before it's done. I promise. Just hang in there with us and tune in tomorrow. That's it for tonight. Thank you guys so much. If you like BS Rebuild, you wanna help out and support, head over to bsrebuild.com. If you wanna follow us in more places, Facebook, BS Rebuild, Twitch, BS Rebuild, Twitter, BS Rebuild, all those places where BS Rebuild on there. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace! Come on.